Long, long ago, in a faraway land, there lived a young man named Daniel. When Daniel was a boy, he was taken from his home in Judah to live in a city called Babylon, where he went to school in the palace of the Babylonian king. Daniel missed his home very much, and every day he prayed that God would take care of his family and his friends and look after him too. God heard his prayers and helped Daniel become wise as he grew older, till everyone in the palace knew of his wisdom. Then one night, while Babylon was sleeping, the king had a dream. And I wish someone would tell me what it means. We are your wise men. Yes, that is true. And though we're using all our wisdom, we're afraid we can't explain your dream to you. What? But there is one who is wiser still, and Daniel is his name. So before you take another sleeping pill. My name is Daniel. That much is true. But it is God who gives me wisdom, and through me, He will explain your dreams to you. His name is Daniel. That's what he said. But when he talks about this God of his, I think he's kind of lonely in the head. <laughs> I do. Well. Daniel was able to explain the king's dream, and this made the king very happy. Daniel, you have enlightened me. Your job I will expand. From now on, I want you to sit right beside me as the second in command. This was very good news for Daniel, but very bad news for the wise men. You see, each one of them wanted to be second in command. Now that Daniel got the job, the wise men would have to do whatever he said. This made the wise men very unhappy, and they immediately started thinking of ways to get rid of Daniel. we gonna do? The king likes Daniel more than me and you. Oh no, what we gonna do? We gotta get him out of here. Oh no, what we gonna do? The king likes Daniel more than me and you. Oh no, what we gonna do? We gotta get him out of here. We could go here. The king likes the dungeon. We could let him rot in jail. Camel's back and send him off to Ur with a cowboy hat without a brim of meat without a spur. Oh, we could give him jelly donuts, take him all away, or we could fill his ears with cheese balls and his nostrils with sore feet. We could use him as a footstool or a table to play Scrabble on, then tie him up and beat him up and throw him out of Babylon. Or. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh. I like it. It's sneaky. And it just might work. We could use him as a footstool or a table to play Scrabble on Then tie him up and beat him up and throw him out of Babylon The very next morning, 
the wise men appeared before King Darius to try to trap Daniel with their scheme. You wanted to see me? <clears throat> We've got some news, good King Darius. We fear your position is precarious. There are some people here in Babylon who won't give you your due. They'd rather bow to other men. Can this be so? Tis true. Oh dear. We've brought a solution of our own design. If you'll just sign this paper on the dotted line. It's an edict stating most concisely what we're all to do. We must bow our heads or bend our knees before no one but you. I see. <clears throat> Just one more time now, let's see if I've got this straight. A law to prove once and for all that I am great. If I'm the king, no one must doubt my full supremacy. So from this day forth, my citizens will pray to only me. Yes, but what if they don't? If they don't obey, any citizen will be thrown into the lion's den. Oh, yes? Well, I guess that would do it. All right then, good work, man. Ta-ta! So the law was passed, the deed was done. Daniel's troubles had just begun. Everyone in Babylon heard about the new law, including Daniel. But Daniel also knew God's law, and God's law told him that he should only pray to God. So the next day, just like every other day, Daniel prayed and thanked God for the sunshine and for all his friends. He also thanked God for giving him the courage to do what was right, even when he knew it could get him in trouble. Did you say trouble? So you guys are wise men. That's pretty cool. Have you, like, have you always been wise? You, you have to go to school for that. Serious about that cheese ball thing? Hey, I can see my house from here. Daniel, because you violated section 42192 R94006.1-7B of the Code of Babylon forbidding prayer to anyone but King Darius, you are hereby sentenced to be consumed by the lions. Goodbye. Hey, don't I get a phone call? Hey, Daniel, you're sure gonna have fun down there. We're not lying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you better be lying down, um, cause those lions are gonna, um, lie on you. <laughs> uh, what? Mine was funny. Yours was goofy. Lions are gonna lie on you? They're gonna eat them. They're not gonna lie on them. Well, well, maybe they're gonna lie on him, then eat him. Or one will lie on him while another one maybe eats him. Or, well, maybe one will sit what, on like him. What, like lions are gonna cooperate? Like one's gonna lie on him and say, hey, you eat him, I'll lie on him. Come on, we're the ones that are lying, not the lions. Oh, it's not so scary down here. A little musty, but not so scary. Oh no, what am I gonna do? It looks like I'm gonna end up as lions too. Don't cry, Daniel. Fear not, Daniel. Don't you? And though it seems this time you won't get through, God has made a way. Even 
even though he still didn't know what to expect, Daniel felt better when he remembered that God was taking care of him, even in the lion's den. Elsewhere in the kingdom, the wise men were busy congratulating themselves for being so clever, while the king, believing that he had lost a good friend, decided the only thing he could do was to pray that Daniel's God would protect him. The next morning, everyone ran down to the lion's den to see what was left of Daniel. It's hopeless. No one could survive a night with those lions. Hello? Did you hear something? Hello? Daniel, is that you? Oh uh, yeah, I'll be right up. I just have to say goodbye to my new friend. <gasps> it's... it's impossible. Yes, it is. Well, hello, everybody. See you guys later. Thanks for the pizza. I had pizza? Well, it's a miracle. Surely your God is above all men. Now I understand. For even at the bottom of the lion's den, you were in his hand. I've got it a new law. From this day forth, everyone will pray only to Daniel's God. No more of this silly praying to me business. Well, whose idea was that, anyway? Oh, yes, I remember. I hear they're looking for wise men down in Egypt. Been fun. Got to go now. Yeah, see ya. But where do you think you're going? Come back here, you hey, scoundrels. Guys, come back. You scallywags. Well, not so bad. Stop. I'm thinking you must stop now.